A couple of weeks ago, we talked about the relationship between music and studying, and whether music is an effective study aid or if it's just a distraction. And if you're like me, music is probably pretty effective for you, but some days, the music just doesn't help, and nothing helps, and you find yourself just completely unable to focus, and maybe during those moments you've wished there was something you could plug into your brain that would force you to do work, like mind control music. Well, if books and movies and comic books are any indication, it's probably a good thing this stuff doesn't exist. Uh, for example, if you remember in the fifth Harry Potter book, there is a music box that opens up and basically hypnotizes everyone and makes them all sluggish and drowsy. Or in issue 46 of the Teen Titans, there's a villain called the Fiddler that can play music which makes the Titans try to kill each other. So yeah, I'm pretty happy this stuff doesn't exist. Mind control music aside though, what about music that can simply cause a cognitive change and be intentionally designed to do so? We know that music does affect your brain in certain ways so could you design music for a specific intended effect? Well, if you ask certain people, the answer is going to be yes. And if you put brain music as a search term here into YouTube, you're going to get tons of videos promising all sorts of benefits like increased focus or better sleep, meditation music, all kinds of stuff. Now, there are a lot of techniques that people use to create this kind of music, and if you know anything about this topic, you've probably heard of one of them, which is binaural beats, which I'm gonna use as the example here to explain this stuff. So a binaural beat is an illusion, actually. It's just two different tones at two different pitches played in each ear, and if you were to put one earphone up while one was playing, you would just perceive a steady tone. If you put the other earphone to your other ear, you would hear a tone at a different pitch. But when you listen to them both at the same time, your brain creates an illusion of a beat oscillating back and forth between each side of your head. And usually this oscillation is really, really fast. So what does this have to do with creating music that can help your brain focus better or achieve some other desired benefit? Well, this has to do with the fact that a lot of neural activity is rhythmic, and this activity is called neural oscillation, or in more popular terms, brain waves. Back in 1924, a German psychiatrist named Hans Berger invented a device called an electroencephalogram, or EEG device, which enabled the measurement of human brain waves. And it was discovered that certain frequency ranges of these waves are associated with different types of cognitive activity. For instance, super slow delta waves are measured during the deepest phases of sleep, whereas higher frequency beta and gamma waves are associated with wakefulness and mental attentiveness. Once that was known, it wasn't too long before the idea of influencing these brain waves using external stimuli came up, and in 1934, an English researcher named Edgar Adrian demonstrated how using photic stimulation, basically flashing a bunch of lights in front of somebody at a very specific frequency, could be used to drive the brain's alpha waves below or above its natural frequency band. What was happening was that the frequency of the external stimulus was causing the brain waves to move toward a similar frequency. They're syncing up, basically. Building off of that, in 1949, a researcher named William Gray Walter published a study showing that this photic stimulation could also cause mental and emotional changes. Now, in addition to photic stimulation, or is it photic stimulation? I didn't really check. Uh, audio has also been studied as a form of external stimuli that can cause changes in brain activity. With regard to those binaural beats I was talking about earlier, these are only one form of auditory stimulation that's been studied, but they seem to be the most commonly known. And the idea is about the same as with Adrian's experiments, design the beat to oscillate at a certain frequency and hopefully gain a desired cognitive effect. And this is often known as auditory driving. So the million dollar question is, does this auditory driving actually work? Can you put your earphones in, turn on a binaural beats track or something similar, and then focus more effectively? Well, from the research I've been doing for the past couple of weeks, I have to say that scientifically, it seems like we don't really know at this point. I found several studies using binaural beats or other techniques that did seem to have positive results, but then I found a lot of other studies that seem to have no results at all. And in the blog post for this video, I'm going to dump a lot of that research in case you're really curious and you want to dig in. Now, one thing that we do know from those EEG measurements, EEG, it's hard to say fast, uh, is that audio and other external stimuli can cause changes in the brain. The question is, can you design that audio to cause specific beneficial changes? And right now that's unclear. So from there we get into anecdotal territory, and a lot of people do report that this brain enhancing music does help them study better, and then some don't. And for the people who do, we always have to consider that at least part of the effect may be due to the placebo effect, basically people being told that this is going to help you, and then they see a change because they're expecting it. So with that in mind, here is my personal experience with brain music. Back in college, I discovered binaural beats because I was basically looking for anything that would help me study better, and they didn't work at all. And the main reason for that is they just don't sound good to me. I can hear that pulsing back and forth, and it's honestly annoying, and I think any benefit I would have derived from that has been overrided by the fact that I was listening to something 
I would rather not listen to. So I ditched it, went back to my normal study music, and that was the rest of college. Near the end of last year though, my interest was renewed in this topic when I was scrolling through some website, I can't remember which one it was, but I found a new tool called Brain.fm, which creates algorithmically generated music that's designed to help you focus. And being curious, I tried it out, and I actually found myself focusing better, but moreover, I didn't find myself annoyed with the music it generated. After I tried it out, I talked with a couple of co-founders because I was really curious about the technology behind what they were building, and it turns out that it does build off of some of those older techniques I talked about earlier in the video, but they're also doing a lot of new things. And one of the main differences is that the oscillations they build into their music use more natural sounding instruments, so it's blended into the music a little bit better. And because they're doing so many new things, there hasn't been time to do a whole lot of research around what they're building, though there have been a couple of preliminary studies at Northwestern University doing like go no go test visual reaction time tests that do have some pretty good early results. So with all that being said, at this point I can't say whether or not it's going to be effective on a large scale, and I'm not sure if I ever will be able to because this is weird neuroscience territory we're stepping into, but I have been using it myself for about two months and uh, it's still effective and it's actually generally more effective than normal study music for helping me focus. So I usually use it when I'm writing and in a few months I'm probably going to do a full review on the channel after I've tested it really long term and know for sure that the placebo effect has been kind of pushed off the table. In the meantime, if you want to try it out for yourself, they sent me a link that you can use to get a longer than normal trial and I'll have that linked up in the blog post for this video. And to be clear, I don't have an affiliation with them other than having talked with the founders, but I am cautiously optimistic about what they're building and after long-term testing, if it works out, I would be happy to recommend it to people in the future. I'm also going to link to a lot of those other binaural beats and isochronic tones and brain enhancing music that I found here on YouTube in the blog post. So if you want to try those things out, I'd be curious to hear from you guys. Does this stuff work better for you than your favorite study music? If you tend to study with silence, does it work better than that? Or does it not work for you at all? I'll have a discussion thread in the College Info Geek community where you can put your thoughts. And other than that, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next week. Hey there guys, and thanks so much for watching this video. Now, if you wanna get new tips on being a more effective student every single week, you can click that big red subscribe button right there. And I also wrote a free book on earning better grades. If you wanna get a copy, you can click the picture of the book and I will send you. If you wanna get those music links and also links to a lot of the research I did for this episode, which is a lot, then you can click the orange logo right there to go to the blog post. And if you missed last week's video, we talked about what to do when you have a group project and you have a lazy member who's not pulling their weight. So check it out if you missed it. If you wanna connect, I'm Tom Frankly on both Instagram and Twitter, or you can leave a comment down below. 